This boy reincarnated into someone else's body to fight out all his enemies. The story starts with the Jinwu and his royal family, who were one of the three families that rule the world. But because they violated the heavenly Tao, the entire royal family was destroyed. Jinwu blew himself up and died along with the enemy. On his deathbed, Jinwu wonders if he will just die like this and thinks he doesn't want to die. Just then, he wakes up on a bed, completely fine. He wonders where is he and then realizes that he is not in his body but some other younger persons. He didn't expect himself, the ninth prince of the Golden Crow dynasty, to be reborn. He recognizes the body and knows it belongs to Ye Jingxin, the son of the Demon King. He has mediocre talent as he was only able to break through the first grade fusion spirit realm. Fusion spirit realm is this world's power system. The instructor of Zhuangji Academy favored Yi Jingxin, leading to him being envied and hated. Some people swear and mock Yi Jingxin. Yi Jingxin, the son of the Demon King, couldn't take the insults and decided to fight them, but since he was only in the first grade fusion spirit realm, he was beaten violently and almost died. But now, the ninth prince of the Golden Crow is born in his body and Jin Wu says that he will protect Yi Jingxin's body from now on. Just then, Jin Wu hears a voice of a person outside. It is a girl who is telling people who are trying to enter the house that they are not allowed to go inside. The people outside the house are friends of Master Long Sing, the person who beat Yi Jingxin. They tell the girl outside the house, Ruver, that she should now follow them instead of Yi Jingxin. Ruver tells them to go away, but they grab. Ruver tells them to not touch her and screams for help. Just then, Jingxin comes bursting through the wall and confronts the servants. He tells them to let go of Ruler and tells them to apologize to him now or they will die. The servant is surprised to see Yi Jingxin in good condition as he was recently beaten by their master Long Sing and Feng. Ruver tells Jingxin to get away from there and don't worry about her. Jingxin tells her to not be afraid as he will be fine. He says that from this moment, whoever dares to touch Ruver will die. The servants think Jingxin is bluffing and mock him for getting beaten up by their masters. Jingxin warns them again, saying that if they put down Ruver and cut off their arm, he will forgive them. The servants say that they will not let her go and they will take her away after they teach Jingxin a lesson. They say that they want to have fun with Ruer. Jingxin gets angry and tells them to cut off their arms and bow down to him three times then he will spare their life. The servants laugh at this and say that this was the funniest joke they ever heard. They mock Jingxin for his first grade fusion spirit realm and say that he can't threaten their life. One of the servants says that he has already broken through the fifth grade fusion spirit realm and goes to attack Jingxin. Jingxin also goes for an attack and punches him, sending him flying and crashing into the wall, hurting him. The other two servants are shocked to see this, and they beg for forgiveness from Jingxin. Jingxin tells them to get out of there and tells Long Sing that those who dare to think badly of him should be prepared to pay the price. The servants agree and bow down to Jingxin and leave, running away. Ruer asks Jingxin when he got so powerful. Jingxin pats Ruer and says that of course he is powerful, and asks her what she thinks of him. He mocks her, asking her if she is ready to give herself to him. Ruru blushes and runs away. Jingxin smiles and says that from now on, he will not let her suffer anymore. In his house at night, Jingxin meditates, thinking that he will bring back the Golden Crow royal family to glory and fight against the Heavenly Tao and step into the Immortal Realm. Jingxin knows he is still weak and wants to get stronger. He brings many spirit stones and summons the Chaos Swallowing Scripture. Jingxin explains that the Chaos Swallowing Scripture was the Jinwu Royal Clan's practice method and only those with a Chaos Bloodline could practice it. The Golden Crow is royalty born with heaven and earth. Jingxin knows that cultivating the Chaos Swallowing Scripture is better as it is ten times faster than normal speed and very overbearing. Rumor is that if the Chaos Swallowing Scripture is cultivated to the extreme, it can devour the heavens and earth. Jingxin meditates and increases his power going beyond the fifth grade fusion spirit realm. All the spirit stones run out and Jingxin isn't satisfied, saying that it is still slow to raise his powers like this. Jingxin thinks that he needs to use the legendary method. He explains that the path of cultivation can be divided into three types, physical, aura, and spirit. These three distinct powers can be integrated into one. The Danshan carries the aura, the soul carries the spirit, and the physical body carries the physical power. If someone can combine the three powers into one body and create a dantian of chaos, they can burst out earth-shaking power, known as the power of the three gods and the person's combat power will increase several dozen times. Jingxin knows that this type of method is too dangerous, but decides to risk it. The first step is to scatter one's own cultivation, soul, and body. He meditates and manages to succeed in dispersing the spirit, body, and dantian. The second step, and the most crucial step, is to create a Chaos Danshan required materials to rely on. Jingxin wonders what he should use and decides to use the Ancient Pagoda. 
It is a treasure he obtained by accident in the sacred mountains of chaos and had kept it in his soul for hundreds of millions of years. Chengxin knows that the ancient pagoda has an extraordinary origin and is the strongest treasure in the world as he wasn't able to see through it back then. This treasure increases his chances of fusion success. Jingxin knows this is the most dangerous step as if the fusion fails, his soul will be shattered and his spirit will be wiped out and only death will wait. He starts the fusion and combines the ancient pagoda into Danshan as the supporting material. Jingxin is in very unbearable pain. Next fuses the Danshan as the core to merge the three god powers into one. Time goes by and Jingxian is struggling to hold on any longer. He feels a bit of the power of the three gods merging successfully, and the power of the three gods is flowing down into his limbs and internal organs. Jingxian feels that if he continues to absorb this power anymore, he will die. He manages to hold on and endure the pain. By the morning, Jingxian is successful in creating the most powerful chaos Danshan in the world and feels wonderful. He now has the power of chaos and the power of the three gods. At Zhuangji Academy, Jingxian and Ruer arrive and Jingxian asks Ruer why there are so many people gathered there. She explains that it is the Academy's annual kneeling ceremony and all the people of the entire Zhuangji dynasty will kneel to all the monarchs of the dynasty throughout the ages to protect the dynasty's eternal glory. Ruer points to the statue of the queen of the Zhuangji dynasty, Zhuangji. Just then, Jingxian senses a hurting intent and looks behind to see Long Xing and his people. Jingxin thinks to himself that if Long Xing provokes him, he will be cruel to him. Just then, the elder of the academy claps and gathers everyone's attention. He tells them that the ceremony has begun and tells everyone to worship and kneel down. Jingxin is the only one standing and the elder asks him why he is kneeling down. He tells him to kneel down and worship the queen as he is violating the dignity of the queen by standing and not obeying. Ruwer tries to convince Jingxin, asking him why he doesn't get down. Jingxin assures Ruwer that nothing will happen. Long Xing speaks up, saying to the elder that Jingxian is disrespecting the queen and he should be thrown into the monster prison and let him die in despair. Other people also tell Jingxian to kneel down and don't disrespect the queen. Jingxian tells them that if he kneels down, something will happen. The others wonder what Jingxian is talking about and Long Xing asks him what will happen. The elder warns Jingxian that if he is going to be disrespectful to the monarch, then don't blame him for being cruel. Jingxian tells everyone that they will regret it and kneels down sending a shockwave that shakes the place and destroys the statue. Everyone is shocked to see this, wondering how Jingxian can do this. Jingxian says that he told them all, but they didn't believe him. Elder calls Jingxian and tells him that he has offended the Empress Zhuangji and says is a crime. Jingxian asks the elder how he has offended the queen. Jingxian thinks to himself that he isn't scared of the queen as even the Zhuangxian world leader, the Lord of the Great Thousand Worlds, was not able to endure the kneeling of the Golden Crow Ninth Prince, Long Sing speaks up, asking Jingxian how dare he be so arrogant to the elder in front of everyone. He goes for a powered punch, telling Jingxian that he will teach him how to behave. Jingxian quickly dodges and slaps Long Sing, which knocks him off his feet. Long Sing is shocked as well as everyone as they wonder how Jingxian was able to dodge and slap Long Sing. They wonder when he became so powerful. Long Sing wonders when did Jingxian become so powerful. To him, Jingxian was a trash that he used to step on before and he can't believe that he has become this strong. He becomes enraged and goes for another attack. Jingxian asks if that wasn't enough and grabs Long Xing's punch. Long Xing is surprised as he was using his full strength as an 8th grade fusion spirit realm and Jingxian was able to block it effortlessly. Jingxian goes for another punch and Long Xing knows he can't dodge it and wonders if he is going to die. Jingxian stops his punch and says that he will spare Long Xing's life because his grandfather was kind to his family. But Jingxian then says that for Long Xing there is no escape from his crimes and kicks him into the air and punches him towards the wall, breaking it and knocking Long Xing out. Long Xing thinks to himself that he can't mess with Jingxian anymore now. Other people around are shocked to see Jingxian so effortlessly beat Long Xing, an eighth stage fusion spirit realm. Even Ruru sees that Jingxian has changed a lot. The elder sees this and thinks that Long Xing's father is the general of the Zhuangji dynasty and his grandfather is the town's marshal. If they get to know that Long Sing was injured under him, the Long Sing family will blame him and he wouldn't be able to bear their anger. The elder wants to take Jingxian down and make him plead with the Long family. The elder calls Jingxian and asks him how dare he injure a disciple and tells him he is going to be arrested today and sent to the dungeon. Jingxian tells the elder that he doesn't need the elder to teach him what he can do. Jingxian says that he already gave Long Sing a chance but he didn't use it and if someone wants to die then they can't blame him for being cruel. The elder hears this and gets enraged. 
He asks where the law enforcement hall is and just then, they enter the academy. People around discuss among themselves that they didn't expect to see Yang Tank, a genius disciple of the law enforcement hall, and they think that Jing Shen is doomed. Jing Shen ignores the law enforcement hall and asks the elder if he really wants to help Long Sing. The elder tells Jing Shen that he is arrogant and he has destroyed the statue of Queen Zhuangji and according to the academy rules, he should be punished. He tells Captain Yang that Jing Shen must be expelled from the academy. Jing Shen tells the elder to not talk nonsense if he wants to protect Long Sing. Yang Chang is angry that Jing Shen ignores him and tells him to shut up and says that the law enforcement hall blames Jing Shen for destroying the statue of the empress and also attacking a fellow disciple. He charges up his energy, ready to attack Jing Shen. People around him are surprised to see Yang's energy being so powerful and wonder if this is the strength of a seventh stage true Qi realm. Even Ruer is scared to see Yang Chang's power, and she hides behind Jing Shen who shields her from the energy release. Jing Shen tells the law enforcement hall that Long Sing wanted to hurt him and he just fought back. He mocks them and the elder, saying that they want to punish him without distinguishing what is right and what is wrong. He says that he sees the law enforcement hall as just useless dogs. People are shocked to hear this and wonder if Jing Chen is crazy. They say that now the law enforcement has more reason to hurt Jing Chen. Yang Chang asks Jing Chen if he is looking for death and stomps the ground, sending shockwaves throughout the academy. Jing Chen is unaffected by this as he tells Ruer to not be afraid. Yang Chang says that he is still considering forgiving Jing Chen and tells him to kneel and beg for mercy. He goes for his attack, Fist of Huang Seal, and it summons a giant fist, ready to punch Jing Chen. Yang says that now Jing Chen will pay for insulting the law enforcement hall. He thinks to himself that his attack, Fist of Huang Seal, is an intermediate attack, more powerful than him and even a ninth stage fusion spirit realm on his peak power wasn't able to block it. He thinks that Jing Chen doesn't have any chance to survive this attack. Jing Chen isn't afraid of the attack and tells Yang Tank that his attack looks really bad. People around are shocked to see Jing Chen standing still and wonder if he has given up on his fate. Both Elder and Yang Taiyang think this attack will hurt Jing Shen. Jing Shen punches the giant fist and breaks it without any effort. Yang Tian Kui, as well as everyone else, is shocked to see this. Yang Taiyang wonders who Jing Shen is. Jing Shen asks Yang Tank if all this confidence comes from the fact that he has suddenly become strong and says it is his turn now. He releases his attack, Demon Pillar, and everyone wonders if Jing Shen is still human. They think that his aura is godlike. He uses his attack to destroy Yang Tank. Yang Chang asks if he is going to die like this and says that he is a genius and invincible. Jing Shen responds that nothing is impossible and tells Yang Tang that in this world, he is just a fraud at the bottom of a well. Yang Chang is terrified but unable to do anything as the attack demon pillar hits him, also sending everyone flying. When the dust settles, not even the bones or ashes remain of Yang Tang. Jing Shen is satisfied with this attack as the demon pillar was a treasure he obtained from an ancient relic hundreds of millions of years ago. Everyone is shocked to see that nothing remains of Yang Tank and thinks of Jing Shen as a demon. Jing Shen tells everyone that this is the end of Yang Tank and tells everyone to be prepared for death since they all wanted to hurt him. Just then, the elder comes from behind telling Jing Shen that he is looking to die and he will teach him of his wrongdoing. Jing Shen asks the elder if he is ready to fight as he was waiting for him for a long while. The elder tells Jing Shen that he has exceeded his expectations but whatever he is going to do will be for nothing. Jing Shen thinks to himself that the elder is at least 10 times stronger than Yang Tank and he can't hold back anymore. He uses his full power to block the elder's attack, breaking his arm in the process. Jing Shen then goes for another attack and punches the elder, sending him flying. The people around see this and wonder if Jing Shen is still human. They know that the elder is a powerhouse in the First Order Martial King realm and can't believe that Jing Shen is managing to fight him. The elder stands up and says that Jing Shen will see his wrath and he will tear Jing Shen into pieces. Just then, a voice comes from above, telling the elder to stop. It's the Dean Yu Jinshen and Elder Yunwei Nisheng, who have come to stop this fight. Everyone is excited to see the Dean Yu Jinshen and Elder Yunwei Nisheng. Even Jingchen is surprised to see their arrival. Jingchen sees Yunwei Nisheng and knows that she will pull him away from there. Nisheng approaches Jingshan and asks him if he is hurt or has any injuries. Jingchen says he is alright, and Nisheng checks to see if he has any injuries. The elder tries to convince the Dean Yu Jinshen and Elder Yunwei Nisheng that Jing Shen is ruthless as a devil as he disrespected the Empress by breaking her statue and hurting the disciple of the law enforcement hall, Yang Chan Zhao, in public. He asks them to arrest Jing Shen and bring peace to the academy. Nisheng ignores him and grabs Jing Shen, telling him to come with her as she has to tell him something. The elder again tries to convince the Dean Yu Jinshen Bu Jianshen stops him, 
telling him that he already knows what happened here and tells the elder to not provoke Jingxin in the future as he is someone he can't afford to offend. In a forest, Nisheng and Jingxin are walking. Jingxin gets memories of the past, seeing Nisheng defending Jingxin from bullies as he was beaten by them. She was always there to protect him and encouraged him to not give up. She told him to practice hard and get stronger. Jingxin's inferiority complex started to go away because of her. Nisheng again asks Jingxin if the people in the temple hurt him. Jingxin thanks her for her concern and says that they don't have the ability to hurt him. Nisheng says she is glad that Jingxin is fine and she was worried that there were so many people bullying him and he would be beaten, so she rushed there to help him. She says that she was impressed by what Jingxin did and says that she didn't expect Jingxin to become so powerful that she would look at him with admiration. Jingxin blushes and thanks her for her praise and asks her if there is nothing more than he will return home and rest. Nisheng feels that Jingxin is different from usual and asks him about it. She says that if Jingxin will tell him what changes to him have happened then she will give him a big reward. Jingxin knows that Nisheng noticed something but he says he can't succumb to her charms. Nisheng pulls his cheeks and says that Jingxin is definitely different from before and tells him that he can't trick her. Nisheng thinks to herself that in the past, Jingxin's confidence was very low and now, this unbreakable confidence is almost impossible to achieve for Jingxin. She asks Jingxin if he is going to abandon her after becoming strong and asks why you will not kiss her anymore. Jingxin says he can't and thinks to himself, why did Nisheng ask the dean of the academy to save him and then ignored everyone and pulled him away without any complaints? He says to Nisheng that she has been very kind to him and he can't do something as ungrateful as abandoning her. He says that he just needs to take care of personal matters and he has to disappoint her. Nisheng gets angry and tells Jingxin that if he leaves then don't come back to her ever again. Jingxin hugs Nisheng and tells her that he needs to go and practice hard. He says that Nisheng has protected him for so long and now is his turn to protect her. He tells her that from now on he will be the only man in her life. Jingxin leaves and Nisheng says to herself that in this life they can finally stop missing out on each other. She says that she has been waiting for this reincarnation for 100 million years and asks herself that in this life will he finally admit his love to her. She says that from the moment she saw him on the Chaos Mountain, she has been in love with him. At the Zizu building in the Zhuangji courtyard, Jingxin is walking around enjoying the environment. Just then, Ruer comes and is glad that Jingxin returned without any harm. She asks Jingxin if everyone that happened today was a dream. Jingxin assures her that it was not and says that from now on, he will be the most powerful man in the Zhuangxin world and no one will ever bully her again. Ruer blushes and says that Jingxin is amazing but she wasn't able to help him. Jingxin then offers to teach her and help her become strong so that in the future, she can protect him. He tells her that the martial arts are very dangerous and asks her if she is willing to practice it. Ruru tells him that she is not afraid and says that as long as she can protect him, she will do anything. Jingxin then takes her somewhere to teach her techniques. Jingxin notices that Ruru's power is good and she is not weaker than those candidates of the middle martial world's holy maidens. He wonders what kind of technique he can teach her. He knows countless skills but can't just teach anything to her. He then thinks that the Nine Heavenly Yuan Yu scripture would be perfect for her. This technique was developed by a Tongshan Empress who looks down upon the world, and it is a suitable technique to be passed on to Ruer. Jingxin explains the technique to Ruer and puts his finger on her forehead, transferring all the knowledge and history of the technique to her. Ruer meditates and practices the technique. Jingxin leaves and he knows that when he will return, Ruer would have improved by a lot and would be at an unimaginable level. He sets up a barrier to protect Ruer as he leaves. Jingxia knows he has to go out to gather information as he doesn't understand this world properly. He also knows that his fifth stage fusion spirit realm cultivation is not enough, and he needs to go out to look for resources to quickly improve his power to deal with the next unknown danger. Right now, Jingxia's strength is comparable to the ultimate power of a martial arts at the fifth stage true he realm, and he uses the power of three gods he can blast out incredible power in one punch and even if there is a third grade martial king realm, Jingxia isn't afraid of him. He knows he still has things to do and without the necessary strength. All of these are nothing. He walks around the academy and people look at him but don't want to provoke him as they fear for their life. Just then, a voice comes, telling Jingxin to stop. It is King Yunting and Jingxin asks her what she wants. Yunting thinks to herself that she doesn't have anything to do so she wants to talk to Jingxin and catch up on old times. Jingxin looks at the slender legs of Yunting and thinks that if Nisheng is charming and beautiful then King Yunting is a goddess. Yunting asks Jingxin if he is satisfied, but Jingxin says he isn't. Yunting gets angry at this, and Jingxin thinks to himself that he subconsciously said something terrible. Jingxin changes the topic and asks her what she wants from him as he is very busy. Yunting asks him to accompany her to the little princess's birthday party. 
She says it would be a good opportunity to build a good relationship with the little princess. Jingxia knows Yunting is talking about little princess Yu Jinhu. She is the most favored daughter of the ruler of the Zhuangji dynasty and she is very talented and her core disciples who have entered the academy have fallen in love with her. The previous Jingxian was one of them and he was just an ignorant man who would naturally be attracted to the opposite gender. After he met the little princess, he never forgot her. Yunting grabs Jingxian's hand and tells him to follow her, but Jingxian says he doesn't want to go. Yunting is surprised that Jingxian said he doesn't want to go and asks him if he used to like the little princess Yu Jinwu. Yunting scolds him that she is the most favored little princess of the Zhuangji dynasty, and she had a hard time getting the invitation and now Jingxian is just saying no to it. Yunting thinks for herself that she was curious about his sudden changes and wanted to talk to him while attending the event, but now Jingxian is directly rejecting the invitation. She tries to convince him, saying that the little princess is very beautiful and looks like a fairy. Jingxian asks her if the little princess is as beautiful as Yunting. Yunting starts to blush and says the little princess is obviously more beautiful than her. Jingxian then says he will only go just because Yunting took care of him. Yunting gets angry by this and tells Jingxian that he has gotten more arrogant and she was trying to do him a favor because they haven't seen each other for a while, but he says such shameful things to her. Jingxian asks her to stop being angry and let's go to the party before they get late. Jingxian starts to leave and Yunting runs behind him, telling him to wait for her. They arrive at the Jin Hall Imperial Palace. Jingxian looks at the place and calls it a luxury. Yunting explains that the monarch loves the little princess the most and this hall is named after the little princess. She says that it is the 18th birthday celebration of the little princess, so it is more lively. She tells Jingxian to not cause any trouble here. Jingxian says that if no one provokes him, then he will not do anything. Yunting says she is going to meet Jinwu and tells Jingxian that he can eat whatever he likes but reminds him to not cause any trouble. Jingxian goes inside the palace and finds himself a comfortable place to eat comfortably. One guy around Jingxian talks to the girls beside him, explaining to her that this princess's birthday party didn't only invite the old seniors, but also the heirs of the major families and also the geniuses of the younger generations. He says that there is no one in the party below the 8th stage fusion spirit realm. The girl then points to Jingxian saying that he is a 5th stage fusion realm. They both see Jingxian and think that he is just a rich spoiled brat. Just then it was announced that the first prince and the second prince had arrived. Everyone stands on their feet, and they both enter the palace. The first prince is Yu Mingyang, and the second prince is Yu Wan Kun. The guests greet both the prince and the grand prince, addresses the crowd, telling them to not be restrained as it is his sister's birthday today, and he tells everyone to enjoy themselves and have fun. Everyone cheers and starts to have fun. The guy around Jingxian explains to the girl that Yu Mingyang is 30 years old, and he has reached the peak stage of the fifth stage martial king realm. He also has countless expert supporters beside him, and they possess many terrifying strengths. Just then, it is announced that young master Ling Yun has arrived. The guy explains that Ling Yun is the youngest prince of the Gu Yu dynasty, and he has reached the sixth stage martial king realm at the age of 24. Just then, it is announced that young master Zhou Dong has arrived. Zhou greets everyone and Ling says he is surprised that Zhao has actually come here. Zhao explains that the biological mother of the little princess of the Zhuangji dynasty was a young lady from a big family within the Baiyang Empire and he couldn't let such an opportunity go. The Grand Prince sees that all the young masters have arrived and invites them all inside. All the four heirs of the four dynasties under the Baiyang Empire have come to the party. Jingxian thinks that if any one of them provokes him, he will hurt them even if they are the heir of the King of Heaven. Jingxian has eaten everything and is now bored. He sees a person near him that looks familiar. Just then, the young master Zhou Dong comes and sits beside the person. He asks her if she is from Lu Qianyi from the Lu family. Lu confirms this and every girl in the party sees that there is going to be a good show as Lu has been taken fancy by young master Zhao. Jingxin recognizes Lu from his memories. Zhao introduces himself to Lu and asks her if she wants to be his friend. Lu hesitates to answer, thinking that she doesn't want to anger him by rejecting him but she fears that if she agrees then something might happen to her. Zhou teases her, asking if he is too ugly, or if the great prince of the great Zhu dynasty doesn't qualify to be her friend. He then proposes a challenge. He says that if Lu drinks from the glass of spirit wine, then he won't bother her anymore. Everyone around her pressures her, telling her to accept the bet and saying that the great prince Zhao has invited her for a drink, and it is a blessing that she will never receive again. Lu tries to suppress her fears and accepts the bet. She thinks to herself that only wanted to be acquainted with the princess and now she is stuck in this situation. She drinks the glass and asks if it is okay to leave. Zhou then pours her another glass and tells her to have another drink. Lu tries to deny it, saying if she drinks any more she will get drunk. 
Joe then threatens her, saying that if she doesn't drink it, then he will make sure her family will disappear from the Jiangshan dynasty. Joe thinks to himself that he is bored with all experienced women, so he wants to have fun with Lu. He pours another glass for her and tells her to drink it. Lu thinks to herself that she has a fiance, and although she has never met him, she has heard he is a waste. She thinks that if Zhu uses any force, she would bite her tongue and hurt herself. She agrees to drink it and gets a bit drunk. Zhu then again pours her another glass and tells her to drink again. Lu thinks to herself that this world is very cruel and ruthless. She begs for someone to help her as Zhu tells her to have another drink. Jingxin slams the table, screaming to Zhou that this is enough and she is going to get drunk. Everyone looks in awe as they wonder who Jingxin is. They know he is only a fifth-stage fusion spirit realm. They think he is going to die. Jingxin introduces himself to Zhou and tells him to get out of the Jinwu palace before he gets angry. Everyone is surprised to hear this and Zhu laughs at Jingxin, saying he is only in the fifth-stage fusion realm so he can't scare him. Jingxin ignores Zhou and checks on Lu, asking her if she is alright. Jingxin tells Lu to not worry as he is here and he would let her suffer anymore. Lu sees Jingxin and knows she has seen him somewhere before. She introduces herself and thanks Jingxin for saving her. Zhou gets angry that Jingxin ignored him and tells him to cripple himself and kneel and only then will he let him go alive. Jingxin tells Lu to stay there and not move as he will take her off Zhou. Lu tells him to be careful. Jingxin confronts Zhou and tells him that after 10 seconds, if he doesn't get out of there, he will make him leave by force. Jingxin is angry that Zhou humiliated his fiance and wants to make him pay. Zhou tells him to say that again if he dares but Jingxin ignores his threats and continues his counting. Zhou says he wants to see what a fifth stage fusion spirit realm can do to him. Jingxin says that 10 seconds is over and he prepares for an attack. He throws his attack at Zhou, who is surprised to see the strength of Jingxin. He wonders how Jingchen is so strong. The attack hits Zhao, creating a large impact. Everyone is surprised to see the strength of Jingxin. They wonder how a fifth stage fusion spirit realm could defeat Zhu Dong, who is one of the most powerful people in the fourth grade martial king realm. The smoke clears and Zhu survives the attack, the wounded. He tells Jingxin that he will hurt him. Just then, it is announced that the Zhuangji dynasty's little princess Yu Jinwu has arrived. Everyone is happy that the little princess Yu Jinwu is here. Even Zhao and Jingxin stop their fight to look at her arrival. Everyone is adoring Yu Jinwu and her beauty. Jingxin also thinks that Jinwu is indeed a beautiful woman. Just then, Zhou calls him out, telling him to wait for him and says that once the party is over, he will hurt him with his bare hands. Jingxin ignores him and walks away with Lu. That wraps up this part, but there's more to come. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next exciting chapter.